Good day traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading and today we're going to be going over some really simple concepts. Uh, I'm going to be showing the five minute chart primarily but this can apply to whatever time frame you're trading, 15 minute, one hour uh, daily and we'll show some examples of those as well. But I want to point out two really simple concepts that I've learned from reading Al Brooks price action books and Bob Volman's uh, five minute scalping and forex trading books and again lots of people uh, messaging me I'm gonna just point out actually three three really simple concepts that if you apply them can be very powerful they're very simple they're age-old uh, I guess wisdom um, and again some of these things have taken me a while to not so much on the technical side to master but more so on the uh, you know psychology side just mastering my own emotions uh, with taking losses and um, identifying the highest probability type chart setups but so again we're just going to go back and we're looking at a blank five minute chart here on the pound yen this is just yesterday's chart uh, no bias of any type of uh, chart because we will look at a couple different examples so first of all uh, one of the things that I'm going to put on the chart is the 20 period moving average and then secondly on this particular chart uh, the time zones of the Asia London and the New York um, market open so basically the first couple of hours uh, around the market opens so as I put that on you'll see these colors appear and people have asked me um, how they get that indicator if you just google I session the I sessions uh, MetaTrader indicator it's free download you can customize the times uh, I basically have just put in the first couple of hours uh, of the 24-hour session which is essentially the Asia pre-Asia open and then the uh, Frankfurt London open out a couple of hours and then the hour and uh, first hour of New York trading why that's just what I have found to be the um, highest probability times for the banks to be making their push not so much during that time but where they establish their ranges and, and you've heard me talk about opening range in the other videos um, but today I'm just gonna demonstrate a couple of simple concepts now I mainly focus around the London Open and the uh, I suppose uh, New York Open London closing times but the majority of my focus is usually uh, between London and New York and that is just when I basically see the same consistent type patterns showing up uh, not every single day and we'll look at a couple of things with the end of day that um, I look to try and identify that as higher probability days to trade now as we see um, the second part I want to talk about is the 20 period moving average so on this 20 period moving average if you've read Al Brooks's books one of the things that he hammers home over and over again is don't go against the trend now we're not using the moving average in this particular discussion to trade uh, to base our trade decisions on but we're talking about the um, once the market has established uh, an, a breakout uh, or a spike what we want to not do until we see a micro trend line break or a you know after that micro trend line break evidence of a final flag we do not ever want to go against the moving average and we'll talk about that when we go into the next little part here so anyways the third component so we've talked about just setting up time frames for high probability opportunities and the second part was the 20 period moving average and the third part is just really simple peak and trough uh, or support and resistance so I'll just change my tools here uh, so if we were to just start drawing off support and resistance and what we're looking for is um, evidence of either price action failing when it gets to resistance or support and then reversing or we're looking for some kind of compression pattern into the moving average which Volman talks about being a squeeze these are the the opportunities where 
once the volume is in the market and we see some levels of demand and supply established and then we actually get price compressing between one of those levels and the moving average for five, six, seven bars, that's where there's a coiling effect. And when we see that, there's a high probability that the market is about to explode or move for a measured move or um, or some other uh, range movement. So anyways, in this particular case, we see then that the price formed a high, then a low, then it came down, did not quite get to the low, stayed within the range of that impulse, that second impulse drive, compressed inside of the moving average, and then proceeded to resume its upward drive. Then we have a, once this breakout bearish candle breakout appears, we now have a new high, then it resumes the trend, and we form a new low. Now it breaks that low. Now this small little follow through. Now the, the again we're we're looking at if we talk if you looked at my other videos, we know that the banks will open up. They go to work. There's order flow that comes into the market. They uh, will move the market and potentially if it's um, you know depending on the on the the time frame and the players involved, they may only move it to make their money or make their uh, unload their order flow for that particular session. Now, by the time that Frankfurt starts to open up, we can see that the market has lost that initial drive and that momentum. Now again, we come back and we're just drawing our same levels of support and resistance. Now, I'm not trading during this first couple of hours. Now, not to say that you couldn't, but what I normally do is I allow the market to trade inside of that first hour, definitely. And so in this particular case, we can see that the market did make a drive down. It made a new low. Now, we've got a pullback high, but we still have that level holding from the uh, failure off the Asian high. And so now, again, We've got our support and resistance level. We've got our 20 period moving average moving in a downward slope. But now we also have the compression effect of this price action building inside of the moving average, similar to what we saw over here. And this is the type of situation where we look to position ourselves. And our plan A is that our premise is that the market is going to explode out. Now, again, depending on how you're going to trade something like that, you can position your stop just above that that high, that swing high, or above the Europe high. Now, the second decision you need to make is at what point are you going to take profits? Now, that may be a 2 to 1, a 3 to 1. Uh, you may sit in that thinking there's going to be another leg down. These are all decisions that you have to make. Um, but again, the original premise was we want to be on side of the moving average we want to be coming off of a support or resistance level and we want to see price compressing and exploding or the prob possibility of it building to explode in the direction of that bias so the market does that we make a new low the market then pulls back and fills retests the breakout traders and then resumes again now we don't see price compressing here, but we, we have definitely established that the market is making its thrusts and its order flow is down. So traders who, who were willing to take that short saw the market work its way down and then break through the lows, forming new a new low just prior to the US open. The US in that pre-market made a uh, lower high and then it made a higher low. Now this may have drawn in aggressive bulls who potentially thought this was a reversal. Then when this traded back, early bears got in, bear second opportunity, then this small little bar was a confirmation 
pulling back inside of the moving average and then of course we see it break through so again just n these are decisions that you have to make uh, but just using simple support and resistance looking at the chart looking at the moving average like personally um, what I see in this particular area right here just I'll just draw a circle here find my tool there we go is an example of price com uh, it's not compressing but it's an example of a measured move or a continuation pattern so okay now the second component of this is that okay we uh, that looks great that's a trending day now let's just scroll back through here and we'll look for something less attractive. There's an example there. Now, what would you do on a day like this? Okay. Now, in order to keep this simple, I think you need to come back and realize again, um, I'm not looking to trade every day that the charts are there. And this is an example of a day that is going to be more challenging for traders. Um, but my same rules apply no matter what. I'm going to be looking for areas of supply and demand. Okay, I'm going to look for some kind of compression of price. And that's not perfect, but there's an example that you want to be on side of the moving average. As soon as it goes to new highs or new lows, you have to be willing to either go to break even or take profits. Now, if we just, again, you can look at this on a 15 minute. Uh, you know, five minute, one hour, the same principles apply. And I think uh, just generally speaking, actually we'll zoom this in, uh, going to a daily, I think this is critical for, for many people to look at because we, a lot of people tend to miss out, on, myself included, tend to miss out on a lot of end of day opportunities where the market actually gives us some absolute golden gems of trades uh, off of supply and demand levels and often it just requires a bit of patience and a bit of simple price action analysis so as you can see price reaches peaks there's pullbacks retests uh, marginal new highs or lows but there's some certainly some fairly substantial moves when the market does retest these these levels and um, Oftentimes, you're able to position yourself with a low-risk, higher-reward opportunity. So use your, use your support and resistance. Use your 20-period moving average. If you're day trading, be aware of the Asia, you know, Europe, London, New York opens and closes. Those are the highest probability time frames for the market to, and the banks, the banks being the largest players controlling the market, where they make their push there's often you know already been a move established to draw traders into the market but keep it simple traders trading doesn't have to be that hard uh, keep it simple the hard part is mastering yourself mastering your emotions keeping it simple having daily rituals that will keep you focused and keep you disciplined to stay on track with your trading plan so Give that a shot, traders. Hopefully, this video helps. Um, you know, again, keep it simple. Uh, work on your your trading plan. Work on your psychology, and definitely be very risk averse with your money management until you master the skills. Thanks, traders. Have a great day. Stay disciplined. Stay focused, and may the markets go with you. Hi, traders. It's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis, and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined and may the markets go with you.